rope ahead of time, feeding it through to the other side. And on the other side, I'm going to tie this, no, I'm not going to tie it, I'm going to clamp this onto the rope as a counterweight and let it dangle down there. Try to find a spot where it's almost taut but not pulling on it too much in the right height here. So with that, at close to the right height, later on we'll move that counterweight when we start cinching up these here in the dead eye and we'll get ready with the the polyester now this is mostly polyester and a little bit of cotton and you can see compared to the cotton how much finer it is and there's no fuzzy stuff sticking out on it when you cut it it doesn't have a frayed end so I like using the polyester for for here just because it's easier to work with this thing is hard enough to So what I'll usually do is start out the bottom hole in the back. Well, sound like a chalkboard. get that through the bottom hole in the back and I'm pulling out about 10 inches so I can go back and forth and I'll go in the bottom hole Bottom hole here. So I got a hole there on the top left and a hole just below it on the top right. I'm going to go because my next hole on this <clears throat> top dead eye is, I'll come up to that on the left. So I'm going to go to the left over here. We'll bring that over to the right side of that other one. You see how that's twisting? When I go to push it in there. So get a bite on it and part of the reason it's twisting is that end is already frayed up a little bit but not near as bad as it would be if it was a cotton string so we got it in there that time So if I come down with this length that I have here and go back up, I'll have barely enough to, to 
tie a knot so I want to give myself a little bit more <clears throat> so take some slack there and then take some slack here And that's just about the perfect height too so I always start in the back that way my tail coming out the front is easier to work with and the knots end up in the back So let's just for sake of trial here cut that off and see if it goes through easier and it did so now the fun part now that we've got those all through there and we barely have any tension on this counterweight I'm going to move the counterweight down so it's hanging in the back, creating a lot of tension. And now we can play with these. I'm sort of pre-twisting that where I want it to be when I'm done. Since it's so close, I'm going to go ahead and tie off the top one. the hip of that knot to be down near the bottom of the main rope. Pull that really snug. I put the super glue on that. Make sure you don't get too much. Because if you get super glue down in that hole there where the ropes are going through, you're not going to be able to pull that tension out or that slack out. And we're going to tie this one off. Down around the bottom here. But before we do, we want to get the tension or the, the slack out of this. And then when we glue that after we tie it, we'll hold this where it's straight. So while I'm putting a little pressure on this tail, Just any meeny miny mo picking a rope and pulling it back and forth. So I got them all tight except this one. This is the last one we did. So the last one we did is feeding back here. And up there. And then I pull on that 
one with a counterweight on it and take out the rest of the slack because this did drop down a little bit when we did that last pull. So now cut this tail enough to tie a knot. Got to orient this in the tweezers so <clears throat> we can get it around and grab it and pull it tight. <clears throat> in the past, I've tugged and yanked and so on on these things while we're working this and break the little link of this chain where it hooks onto that hoop and that ends up being a <clears throat> a big boo-boo because if I break the link of that chain where it hooks on the hoop you can see that there creates a nice mess where you have to refeed some slack of the chain and get that hoop hooked back to the chain oh my gosh I got some of that on video you watch my back past videos you'll see I probably did that three or four times so I want to get around and do another knot here before we glue it up So using two pair of tweezers, you can get in there. Pull that tight without breaking it. Pull it tight again. After you correct that position. That looks pretty good. Now I'm a little liberal there with the glue. Because I want the glue to soak into that rope and the chain and the position that that dead eye is sitting in coming through the wood there. And we very carefully cut this off. But trying to keep that thing in that position. So, we got this side done. Awkward. starboard side hold on baby get this where I got enough room to work in there here's our little counterweight so this is the trickiest part of the whole process We'll uh, get another dead eye out here. You can see I got a long ways to go as far as the rigging with all this, but it's going to go the rigging and so forth. Once you get this 
rope ladder done on the mast, the rigging goes a lot quicker. The sails take a little time, but the rigging is step by step, one at a time, you eventually will eliminate. So, got this here. Get the camera in a good spot. And I literally use a uh, uh, my wider pair of tweezers here. Where'd they go? I use a wider tip tweezers. I don't know what I did with them. I can simulate that dead eye in a knot. Should be here somewhere. I gotta organize everything. Get back to filming this some more. So I'm just pulling a granny knot in this rope here. And then using the tweezers to simulate the dead eye where it's going to set at. I hold them open enough to get the dead eye in there. I'll have to adjust it not once I get the dead eye in there. And then I find it's a little easier to put the dead eye on <clears throat> a pair of tweezers in a position where I'm not interfering with the knot. and insert that dead eye into the knot and snug it. You can see I'm a little low there. So I'm going to hold the dead eye with the tweezers and pull the tail of that rope adjusting that knot position. See how that is adjusting it to the right height? And then try to pull that knot tight. So I'm going to pull it out of the tweezers now. And slightly snug it. And then when I pull all the slack out of the rope, it's going to be in a, pretty close to the right spot. This is where it's a little complicated because it's easy to get the knot tight and this be in the wrong spot. So you got to play with it a little bit until you feel confident it's going to work out at the right height. And when you're <clears throat> ready, go ahead and do another granny knot close to the right height. And if it's too low, you can tie you can tie another knot in the rope up high here so it's not visible and that'll take up some of that slack a knot so you can see it's a little too low and I've already got two knots on it so before I go any further down here 
I'm just going to do a, a granny knot up here. And use the tweezers again to control where the granny knot comes at. Now you see there, perfect. So that was just the right amount. Then I'll take a piece of <clears throat> a little piece of frog tape. Make sure this isn't wrapped around the wrong way. Pull that tail up in here. Make sure it's even. And just put a little dab of frog tape on there. That'll keep that tail out of the way until we get this looped up. And then we'll tie three more of those four or five millimeter knots on there. So now we do the same as we did before with the polyester we get that polyester get that thing cocked in your tweezers like a gun and shoot for that bottom hole coming in the back Pull out enough, you can estimate how much you're going to need for three loops. Get that baby cocked in the gun again. You find your dead eye. And one thing I do do before I pull that first one through. And I sort of look at which side that thing wants to hang on naturally. Because if I, if I just put it through arbitrarily, it may create a twist in it. So, we went in the bottom and came out the front. So now <clears throat> I'm in the front and I'm sort of to the right, so I'm going to work everything from the right to the left. And I like using these tweezers um, for feeding because it lets me get around stuff, whereas a straight pair of tweezers is a little more awkward. So I want to go into this left one. And it's just enough fray. Or I don't want to fight it. Sometimes you see me in past videos dab the super glue on the end there. And that would have been <clears throat> before I started using this polyester. I was using that cotton. And man, that stuff was a nightmare. So I'd have to put super glue on the end of the string just to get it to feed through these holes.
Okay, now we'll go in the left one there. And then go in the back top one. And that's coming out. I'm going to move it to the middle. So it'll stay in the middle going through this middle top hole. Okay. I can tug on get it fairly snug and tug on both ropes before before I uh, tie this last knot here or this will be the knot that's going to hold the dead eye loops I want that to be as snug as I can before I do the second wrap. And I'm pushing down on that second knot to keep it as close to the top of the dead eye because it's just a wrap over knot it isn't very cinchable <clears throat> without that super glue helping lock it down so I'm getting close now sort of arbitrarily picking ones I think will pull the slack out here and when I pick one I yank it up and down in both directions trying to get it to slide through the holes in the dead eye So without actually breaking that baby off, that's pretty close, but this is a little too high yet. All right. So I'm going to take this clamping tweezers, put on there. Help pull down on it. got to do it the other way yeah so I'll pull down on it see how much slack is in there now it's usually the one that's taunt in the slackness of all of them that will help pull the slack out of the other ones you just got to find that one and that looks pretty good so 
so I'll cut this so I got a tail to tie a knot with. Get that tail out of the way because it's too hard. It's hard enough as it is to tie this knot, let alone have something, something in the way. carefully without breaking that chain and do another one put a good amount of force on there but not enough to break it hopefully before that glue sets too much take this off and then sort of pre-twist that baby where you want it to set we'll let that glue set for a little bit before we cut that tail And while we're waiting on that, I use a cotton string now <clears throat> to tie these cinch knots on here. <clears throat> so we can get rid of that. Frog tape. See how that knot flipped over? I'm going to try to tie it at the same height as these other ones here. Pull it tight. Little dab of glue. Cut the tail off. I would leave a description in the comments for these scissors, but I bought these at uh, flea market. Stainless steel, Pakistan. They do make some good stuff in Pakistan. <laughs> But um, these are the only ones I've ever found. There's a guy there at the flea market that sells all kind of sewing stuff and tweezers and cutters and well, just more than sewing stuff. But he's got he's got a wide variety of stuff that is ideal for model makers. So back to this cotton string, we got a little scrap piece here, we'll put that back. Try to use as much scrap as I can. I don't know when I start doing all the rigging on this baby if I'm going to run out of thread or not. It's going to be hard to match these diameters and types of thread. This model being uh, 
A R T E S A N I A. Latina. I'm sure it's not made in America. So it would be hard to. Ooh, that's a. I noticed that a few weeks ago. This is going to one of the smaller dead eyes and it broke off here. You can see where the link opened up. Um, because it's not broke off up here, this will be easier to repair. Uh, the little dead eyes are the last. There's only two of them on each side. Oh, three of them in the front here. So <clears throat> we'll have to repair that. Before we do the little dead eyes but we got seven more I won't put glue on there before I cut it we got seven more big dead eyes to do this front mask before we worry about them little ones so there Oop. I cut this one too that's one of the reasons I like these because I can cut here or here or here or here. It doesn't matter. It cuts it. It's got a little serrated edge against a smooth edge. I mean, they work good. Got some super glue on them there. So now we can pull this. frog tape off cut that last tail it's almost impossible with anything else I can get way up in there with these scissors so the last tail is cut instead of eight more we have six more to go thanks for watching